Hey guys, hope you're doing all right. Um, happy Sunday, and I hope to see you guys at service today. And if not, I completely understand. Um, I still want to make sure that you guys uh, and your families follow whatever safety uh, protocol you feel is necessary because um, as, as important as it is to worship um, with each other uh, in this time of crisis, in this time of uh, just uh, a panic and, and worry, I think it's just as important to, for us to make sure that our families are comfortable, our families feel safe, and um, for us to make sure that we do whatever it takes uh, to abide by these laws. And uh, so just a couple of announcements uh, before we get started. Um, we're about hopefully almost uh, to the way of meeting back completely. So we got our uh, summer schedule up. Um, unfortunately, we're meeting on Thursdays instead of Wednesdays, uh, but we had an awesome turnout for last week for our uh, post-quarantine hangout. Make sure you show up this week on Thursday for our movie night where we're going to be watching Sonic the Hedgehog. And so even if you don't feel like watching it, I encourage you to just come and hang out with us. There's going to be snacks, um, drinks, and so uh, make, sure, uh, make sure you show up. Um, tonight at 6 p.m. we're going to be doing our Super Sunday. And for those of you that don't know what that is yet, it is basically Super Summer, um, except that we'll be just doing it off campus this, uh, this year. And I know some of you guys were really excited for it, and I, you know, and I do feel for you because I really wanted to go as well. Uh, but we can still do, uh, you know, what God has in store for us. We can still make the most of it uh, by meeting together, by doing the discussions, by worshiping, and, and just making a, you know, just an awesome thing out of an unfortunate circumstance. And so I really do encourage you guys, if you felt like you wanted to go to Super Summer, if you want, if you were planning on going to Super Summer, um, or if that's something that you wanna look into, think about, uh, I wanna encourage you guys to be there. Uh, it's night at 6 p.m. and we're gonna be in the conference room right, in, uh, right across the hallway from the office. Um, so just quick reminder, it's a leadership uh, activity. It's a leadership camp normally. Uh, and so if, being a leader is something that you feel like you're already doing or something that you feel like you're gonna be doing at some point. Uh, I really do wanna encourage you uh, to come, especially if I haven't talked to you yet because I just don't know where you're, maybe I don't know where your heart's at right now. Uh, but if that's something that you wanna pursue, please, 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 6 p.m. Fellowship Hall, uh, be there. We're gonna just have an awesome time. Uh, our summer camp is to Broken Bow. Uh, some forms have already gone out. Uh, if you can't make it to the Sunday services or Thursday night activities, please let me know so I can mail them out to you uh, because I, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up or not uh, unless you tell me. Uh, $70 a person. We're going to leave on the 8th at around 9.30 and we'll be back on the 10th at around, uh, I would say, about 8.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, we're going to have an awesome time of fellowship, of worship, and so I really do encourage you guys to uh, make sure that you do the best that you can to come. Uh, if money is an issue, please let me know, and uh, I'll be more than willing to help you out with it. Uh, and I think that's all I have for you. So, uh, can't wait to get back into the normal stretch of things. Sunday school, I'm sure you guys are excited to see your Sunday school classes and teachers, especially with the, the new year moving up. Um, so, let's, uh, let's jump in. So, we've been talking uh, a lot about what it means to be a disciple um, throughout this entire year. And this year, uh, this week, I wanted to talk to you guys about prayer and the importance of prayer. And so today's verse is in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. And so if you do not have a Bible with you right now, uh, pause the video, go and grab one, because I really do want to encourage you guys to have a Bible with you at all times. That's actually why I stopped even putting the verse on the video, is because I really, really, really stress how important it is for you to have the Bible with you um, during Sunday services, during Sunday school, and, and during uh, uh, worship times. And so Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, all right? Make sure you have your Bible. Pause the video if you don't. Um, and the verse goes like this, Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. And so to, uh, for us to understand this, we have to understand who's speaking in this passage first. And um, the person that's speaking right now is God. And, and the reason that he's saying these things is because 
it, it's just one short verse, but there's so many important, uh, there's such an important thing, uh, two things in, in this particular verse, all right? So the first thing is that God wants our prayers, right? He doesn't need them, but he wants them, all right? He wants to be uh, in communication with you. He wants us to have dialogue with him. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to, to communicate, right? The second thing is that God essentially promises that he's going to respond to our prayers. So God is always going to listen and he's always going to answer our prayers, uh, maybe not in the way that we expected or we asked for, um, but in the way that he knows is right and good. And so uh, what about if, if God didn't want us to pray to him, right? So let's just think hypothetically, just uh, if God didn't want us to pray to him, um, would it change his character at all? Would he, would he be a different God? And, and the, the reason I ask you this isn't because um, there's a concrete answer, right? There's like no set way that we're going to define God if he didn't want to answer our prayers or he don't, didn't want us to pray to him. Um, but in your discussion groups, talk about that a little bit. Like, what kind of God would he be if he didn't want us to pray to him? And so he, he made a relationship with us that wasn't absolutely necessary to him. Right? And I think that's amazing that we have a God, that our God uh, loves us to the point that he doesn't want just a slave and master relationship. He doesn't just want um, a creator and a creation relationship. He wants, uh, um, you know, a father and, and child relationship. He wants us to have a, a good rapport, a, a fun relationship, an intimate and trusting relationship with him. And that's why prayer is so necessary. He made the rules. He knows what we need. He could have simply uh, made a relationship with us, right? Like where it would be just full on servitude, where we'd be like robots, uh, just answering and replying whatever he wanted us to, but he decided not to do that. He gave us free will. Right? And so just as importantly, he made, it, uh, he made it known to us that we should be able to pray to him about anything. He doesn't discriminate against prayers and even if the prayer that you pray is wrong he wants to be able to correct that um, and so he wanted an open line uh, of communication between him and us and so just think for a second about how awesome that is that that the God of the universe that the God who created everything wants to be our pen pal wants to be uh, our telephone buddy he wants to hear about our day he wants to hear about our worries about the good things that happened about the bad things that happened the things we need help with and the things that we want to help others with that's just amazing to uh, to me personally and so if we understand the importance of prayer now then we need to move on to um, how it was modeled for us how we should pray what that prayer looks like what that life of prayer looks like and we don't have to look any further uh, than God himself, right? We look at Jesus when he was with us uh, on earth. Um, if you want to go to Luke chapter 5, verse 16, real quick. Uh, Luke chapter 5, 15, all right? Uh, sorry, Luke chapter 5, 16. All right? So Luke chapter 5, make sure you have your Bible. If you somehow put it away or if you skipped over getting your Bible last time, I want to make sure you guys pause it. Go grab your Bible, make sure you have it with you, all right? Luke chapter 5, verse 16, and it goes like this. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. He would go to desolate, desolate places and pray. Luke chapter 5, verse 15, he would go to desolate places and pray. He would withdraw there. Oh. So there's a, there's a really, there's a big handful of descriptive words um, that are used in this pas uh, passage, right? Like, it's not just, um, you know, ambiguous uh, things that happen, but there's, it's intentional. There's a reason why uh, these things were written the way they were written. And so there's two words that really stuck out to me, and that's withdraw, right? He withdrew and to desolate, right? So withdrew and desolate places. And, and we have to think about why he does that, right? Like, why would Jesus 
the Son of God, right? God Himself, who has an open and you know relationship and communication with God, 24/7, right? Like a non-stop, you know, uh, a 24/7 uh, calm link with God Himself, right? Why would He withdraw to step, uh, to desolate places to pray? And that's because his prayer was an intimate time. His time of prayer was an intimate one with God. He didn't want to just go through the motions. He didn't want to just say what he needed to say and move on with his day. He valued that time. He valued uh, that opportunity to just spend time with him. And so he would withdraw, right? He would back away from everything else in the world to desolate places where nothing else could distract him. And he went there to pray to God specifically. And so he made a conscious effort, like he wanted to let people know that's where and why and how they should be praying. And so how do you withdraw from others so that you can pray? Think about that. And so in the, in, in the next question up should be obviously, how do you find your desolate places? Right? How often do you go to those desolate places to pray? How far? How often do you withdraw from people? How often do you uh, leave from the things of the world to pray? And it could be busy. It, it could be difficult in our busy times, in our busy schedules, in our crazy lives right now to be able to do that. But here's the thing, if that's not a priority, then we need to re-examine um, what your priority is, right? Because everything that we do should be based around that relationship with God, that walk with God. And if we're not communicating with them, that's the wrong way to start the day. That's the wrong way to start something new. Um, go to uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 35, right? Mark chapter 1, verse 35. So, uh, same thing, make sure you have your Bible out, pause it if you need to find it, alright? Mark chapter 1 verse 35 and it says like this, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. So once again, key word here, desolate, alright? So what does it mean uh, to be in a desolate place? Right? We, we talked about it before. And that's to uh, be away from other temptations, other distractions. But how was he able to find this desolate place? Right? And so Jesus didn't go out in the middle of the day, in the busiest part, and he didn't try to find a, a little 10 minute window to squeeze in with God um, in a desolate place, right? He made that place desolate by going when it was still dark. Just think for yourself real quick. Are you are you a morning person? Are you someone who is able to function uh, well in the morning, early in the morning? Why is it harder to, to find time um, alone after the day has started and you're up and going? So think about those things real quick. But when we when we talk about creating time with God, right, it requires an intentional action to withdraw from others to desolate places. It doesn't happen accidentally, it doesn't happen coincidentally, and here's the thing, desolate places are hard to find nowadays, especially uh, if you got that handy dandy little device with you all the time. Most people don't get up earlier than they have to, and this is something that I personally struggle with, uh, seeing as I'm not a morning person. Right? Getting up that extra hour, that extra 30 minutes early um, that I need to spend time with God is so difficult, but it is so necessary. If you're up that early and nobody else is, then guess what? You're alone. You're by yourself and you found your desolate place. And so, can you think of any other reasons possibly why the morning might be the best time that you seek to hear from God? That's something I want you guys to talk about in your groups. Okay. So, finally to wrap it up, 
as a disciple of God, as a disciple of Christ, right? We should hunger to know God. And that's kind of what the theme has been for the past couple of weeks, is that hunger to know more about God and to know who he is. And one of the main ways that we do that, and we talked about is to right, read and memorize his word, but it's also important to pray. Right? A lifestyle of prayer isn't something um, that a lot of people find easy. Right? It's challenging, it's difficult. But we have to understand that it is absolutely essential. It is one of the foundational building blocks of having a, um, a relationship with God where we hunger to know. If you hunger to know somebody, then one of the main things that you're going to do is you're going to talk to them. You're going to talk about them. You're going to talk um, you know, to them about things they like, things they don't like, hobbies, right? Uh, family, friends, and, and so on and so on. So the more you want to know someone, the more you're going to talk to them. And it's no different with God. And so I want you guys to think about this week as you uh, go through day by day. <clears throat> think about, you know, have you been really communicating with God? Or have you just been saying stuff? Let me end you guys out on a prayer. Father, we just thank you so much that you continue to love us. That, that you, the creator of the universe, would take us, your insignificant creations, and want to talk with us, want to communicate with us, want to live our lives with us. God, I pray that we just understand the magnitude of what that means for us and the honor and glory um, that is bestowed when, when the Almighty God wants to be actively involved in our lives. I pray that we establish a lifestyle of prayer, that we are prayer warriors, that we start the day and we end the day, and we go throughout the day in prayer. I pray that you continue to bless us, especially as we head into our summer activities, continue to mold us and grow us in your image. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys. Love you.